Well, I want to welcome everybody to a Brain Cutting. I'm sitting here in the Learning Center in one of the rooms just by the kiosk with a good friend Chris who said he'd help me tape this. So he's standing behind the camera and uh, I'm sitting here in my cutoff shorts, uh, uh, cutoff uh, khakis. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for the party this morning during lecture. I want to use this uh, time to help you uh, kind of solidify some of your thoughts about the structures of the brain, the organization of the brain, once f what is uh, like front and back, top and bottom, and I think this might help you if you have time to, uh, to watch. Um, let's just look at this brain. As you can see, um, my forehead would be out here and my occipital bone would be back here. So this is the prefrontal cortex out here the occipital cortex would be back here. This would be the right hemisphere, and this would be the left hemisphere. So if I turn the brain this way, again, here's your frontal lobe, here's your occipital lobe, here's a little piece of the spinal cord and cerebellum's down underneath here. This would be the left cerebral hemisphere, this would be the right cerebral hemisphere. Now, some of the things that you might be able to see here that you haven't uh, identified yet would be, let's just this big lateral fissure here coming up. And uh, here's, let's try to identify a precentral and a postcentral gyrus. And you can see it doesn't show very well here. My guess is that this is a good precentral gyrus. And this is kind of a curly cued, strange looking postcentral gyrus. The reason I think this is the precentral gyrus is that I can see some gyri running this way. So this would be the superior frontal gyrus, then the middle frontal gyrus, and down here the inferior frontal gyrus. So I think this is the primary motor strip and this is the primary sensory strip. Back here you'd have the visual cortex, occipital lobe. Here you'd have the parietal lobe. And when you're thinking about the parietal lobe, you have to think about uh, left neglect. And in fact, I'm pointing to the right hemisphere. When you get out here in the prefrontal cortex, you have to think about poor Phineas gauge. And if you get out in front of this motor strip right about in here, you're thinking about premotor. So don't get confused between premotor and prefrontal. Premotor then would be the two, two areas we talked about, the, the lateral premotor area here and the supplementary motor area here. Now don't forget, this supplementary motor area is going to go down here onto the midline. This motor strip is going to come down here on the midline. The sensory strip is going to come down here on the midline. So you know the artery to the midline of the hemisphere is the anterior cerebral, except in the back where it's the posterior cerebral. Why don't I turn it over a little bit like this? I hope Chris can get a, a good zero in on this. Um, here you can see the brain stem, the cerebellum, medulla, you can see the pons, you can see the vertebral arteries here and the basilar. Now I've made a tape of all this and uh, that'll be on the uh, on learn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the brain stem off right through the midbrain. So I'll do that and uh, let's see what we can identify after I do it. So I'm going to go right down through here and try to cut off the brain stem right through the midbrain, through the superior colliculus. Let's see what we get here. So you good, get a good cut. Take this off. Oh, goodbye, Basler. And uh, come back down here. This is not turning out to be a great cut, is it? Let's see, get that brain stem off of here. Wow. Let's see what we got. You can see why I'm not a neurosurgeon. I'm really mucking this up, but let's just get her off there anyway. Well, not too bad, not too bad, Big John, not too bad. But what do we have here? Kind of a weird looking midbrain because of the way I cut it. But can you zero in on that, Chris? Boy, this is a beautiful structure. Um, so right here, these two front bumps would be the superior colliculus. These back, this back bump would be the inferior. 
This would be the cerebral peduncle. This uh, black area here would be the substantia nigra. Then you'd have the ruber duber in here. So you can kind of think of how this would be a nice midbrain section. So let me just see what I can find here if I do a little cut like this. Let's see what we see here. That might remind us of some things we've seen in the brain stem. Well, certainly we can see the cerebral aqueduct, the inferior colliculus, a little bit of the decusation of the superior cerebellar peduncle. Down here, this looks very pons-like, very pons-like. So we'll just put this aside, put it up here. Maybe I'll do another cutting, and I'll put this up here too. Now, when you do neuropathology, or when you do autopsy pathology, you're going to cut the brain, like in frontal sections. And we'll also do a horizontal section. But why don't we just start out here, up arbitrarily, going to go from the front, here's your forehead, back to the occipital lobe. We're just going to section it frontally like this. And let's see what we see, because we know we've cut most of the brainstem off. And you can watch those tapes on the brainstem that I made. They're really good. So now we just are talking about, we're going to be cutting through the structure now. My fingers down on the medial wall of both hemispheres. This would be the medial wall of the right, the medial wall of the left. And remember, the homunculus is going to be going down like this. So on the midline would be the leg motor, the leg sensory, and in front of that, the SMA. Then this is the lateral wall out here. So this is all the middle cerebral. This is all the, mostly the anterior cerebral territory. So why don't we make a cut? and see what we see. And you'll be the first to see. I don't know what I'm going to get when I go through here, but I think we'll all learn something. So I'm going to try to cut perpendicular. I'm going to cut this like a submarine sandwich. And um, then I'll have a, a stack of pieces together that maybe I can photograph later and label them for you. So I'm going to cut the first section up here through Phineas. All right. This is through my prefrontal cortex. Let's see what I get when I cut it. I'm going to start, mm, maybe I'll start at the tip, tips of the temporal lobes here. But at this, whoa, first of all, though, wait a minute. I got to do something to take care of a lot of things that I've had a lot of questions about. We talk about the ventral medial temporal lobe. So I think everybody will agree, if you look at it like this, that this is the temporal lobe. Here's the other temporal lobe right here. That's temporal lobe. Your auditory cortex would be right in here on the superior temporal gyrus. So there's your auditory cortex, 41, 42. But now when we turn this under here like this, th look at this temporal lobe down here. Near, and this is a key area that I hope most of you remember. So this is all temporal lobe here. And this is the front. This is your forehead. This is your occipital bone back here. Here's, here's your brain stem. You can also see some of the mammillary bodies here. You can see some optic chiasm. Whoops. You can see some optic chiasm there. Some optic, what would that be? Nerve or tract? That would be the tract. Here's the nerve up here. Here's some internal carotid. But this area right here I want to really emphasize because there's been a lot of confusion. This was called the ventral, because it's on the ventral surface of the temporal lobe. Medial, because it's closer to the midline, the ventral medial portion of the temporal lobe. And this is where Kluver Busey went in and took out a lot of this temporal lobe on both sides. And what do we have in this temporal lobe? Well, first of all, we see this little bump here called the uncus. And deep to the uncus would be a structure called the amygdala. So we know the amygdala, and we know about the woman who lost both amygdalas and had no fear. She'd walk down the hallway and give everybody a hug, even if they had a nasty look on their face. So this, um, this uncus, you know, can herniate through the tentorium and then push on that poor little cerebral peduncle here and also the third nerve. So here's your uncus. If you cut right through here, if I had a frontal section through here, I would see the amygdala. Now, the rest, a lot of this overlying cortex here is getting information from the olfactory tract, which I 
There's a little piece. My goodness, I pulled it right out. Here's the olfactory, what? Nerve? No. This is the bulb. The nerve terminates in the bulb. The bulb has cells that go back the tract, and a lot of these olfactory tract axons go over this cortex here of the medial, ventral medial temporal lobe. So this is your primary olfactory cortex. Now remember, what was weird about olfaction was that this, it would go directly to the primary olfactory cortex without going through the thalamus, like most sensory systems. Once it synapses in this olfactory, primary olfactory cortex here, it goes to the thalamus. That's very weird. Then it goes to the thalamus. It goes to the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus. And then you know it can jump out to the insular cortex for flavor and even go to your orbital frontal cortex up here, Phineas cortex. What else is deep in here besides, remember now, you're going to have your amygdala right about here, underneath here. You're going to have your olfactory cortex here. But also, deep to this, you have the, probably one of the most amazing structures in the brain. We can't see it. It's deep here called the hippocampus. So when Kluver and Busey started taking out ventral medial temporal lobes, they were messing around with the amygdala and all of its sphere properties. They were messing around with the uh, hippocampus and the memory problems it would have. They, they were messing around with olfactory cortex. So some of the, you know, sometimes when people herniate their uncus, they have hallucinations or they imagine strange smells. Um, what else would happen in a Kluver Busey? Well, don't forget, underlying this uncus here is the amygdala. And the amygdala is going to project to the hypothalamus. The amygdala is going to project to the hypothalamus. Well, here are the mammillary bodies, the tuberal region, and here's the optic chiasm. So this, would, this part underneath here would be the superoptic area of the hypothalamus. This right here, where you eat too much or too little, would be tuberal. And back here, mammillary region. And uh, remember now, lesions in the mammillary region, okay? You're going to have confabulation, but you're also going to have hypothermia. Lesions up here in the superoptic area, you're going to get many, many things, but you're also going to have hyperthermia. Point is, the amygdala projects to the hypothalamus. And you know the hypothalamus is involved in everything. Eating, sex, water, uh, what else? Um, anything, anything, anything. So if the amygdala is projecting to the whole hypothalamus and you take out this whole thing in the temporal lobe here, including the hippocampus, the olfactory cortex, and the amygdala, well, because you take out the amygdala, the hypothalamus isn't normal. So can you imagine what would happen in those Kluver Buseys? Well, they were docile. Why would they be docile? Amygdala lesion. They ate too much, hyperphagia. How, what could account for that? The projection of the amygdala to the, to the middle area of the hypothalamus. Uh, hypersexual, I mean the hypothalamus is loaded with uh, information about sex. So think about your Kluver Busey. It's going to be on the exam. And I want you to know this ventral medial area. It's very, very important. Here's your oncus. Very, uh, very important because it herniates down through. Here's your olfactory tract, part of the limbic system. Olfactory limbic system. All right, now we can go over and start cutting. Let's see. Does anybody know, anybody guess what we're going to see on our first cut? Well, now front, frontal, frontal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, down on the side here, temporal lobe. This big fissure right here, where is that fissure? This big fissure coming up here, lateral fissure. Lateral fissure. Now here we go. Let's see what we get. Everybody close their eyes and we'll take our first section. Let's see. Oh, I'd say halfway back to the tip of the temporal lobe. Let's just see if we get anything interesting. Halfway back to the tip of the temporal lobe. Now I'm going to keep this hidden from you so that you're closing your eyes and you're imagining what you're going to see when I, when I take this section and put it up so you can see it. Okay, well here's the first section right here. Here's the first section right there. And what do you see? Well, basically, you just see a bunch of white matter here deep. Let's see. This is a lot of white matter. This is a lot of cortex. There's really nothing here except prefrontal lobe. 
prefer there's not even a bit of the ventricular system here. So this is the first piece. It's all cortex. It's all Phineas cortex. It's all executive cortex. So you can imagine what's going on in here. Plans for the future. You know, my son is going to get married in December. I'm sure he's using his prefrontal cortex, you know, to plan for, the, plan for his retirement, plan for his kids, uh, if he has them, and I certainly hope he does, um, plan for his kids' college. This is all prefrontal cortex. Remember, Phineas lost his prefrontal cortex. So, you know, he'd do everything crazy. He'd urinate in public. He didn't plan for his retirement. He'd do all kinds of crazy things. This is your executive cortex. And that's what it looks like. Now, this section here, this section, and I know Chris probably can't see that section anymore. I could put it back here. Maybe Chris could see it. All right. Isn't going to look a lot different from this. Okay. So what do we have here that pretty much the same, isn't it? Okay. So here's a lot of prefrontal cortex, a lot of prefrontal cortex. Now, wait a minute, let me just take this out of here. There's some stuff starting to bulge in here, but let's take a little thin cut through here and see what's coming in here on the midline down in there, all right? So now, although Chris can't see it, oh, I bet you can, Chris, I'm gonna take another slice of this brain. Uh, looks like I'm a little asymmetric, doesn't it? Okay. I'll take a little slice here, and we'll see if we get any goodies here. Here we go. One, I'm sawing very carefully. It feels not too bad. And let me see what we get here when we come out. This is pretty darn exciting. Let's, oh my goodness, let's look at this right here. Oh, Chris, can you see this? My goodness. Well, what do you think all this is here, huh? Well, a lot of cortex here. I'd say prefrontal cortex. Here's a little artery on the mid, here's a little artery here. Um, hard to tell what that is right there. But look at these spaces here. Can you see those spaces? Look at the, they end right here. So you can see that this is the most anterior rostral towards the forehead part of the ventricular system. So the ventricular system just dead ends right there. So this would be filled with cerebral spinal fluid right there. So this is the most rostral out here front part of the lateral ventricle. The anterior pole of the lateral ventricle would be right there and it would be filled with fluid. Now, if I put that right there, all right, and then we can look at this one and see if we see anything really different here. Well, what do we see? Now we're looking back. Look what we're looking into. You got a good one there, Chris? That's very cool. Very cool. Look at the size of that ventricle. Oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, going back in there like that. Oh, no, no. Now, remember, that ventricle is going to go back all the way to the occipital lobe, and it's also going to go down into the temporal lobe. This be, be, now, where, when it goes down into the temporal lobe, we call it the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Where it goes back into the occipital, it's the posterior horn. So you can see here, I can put my finger in there and I'm probably going to go way, I mean, that's deep. That's way back there. It's a huge ventricle. I've never seen such a good section of it. Okay, very exciting. Very, I'm very excited. Let me pull some of this stuff off here. I hope Chris is getting something out of this. It looks like I'm pulling on something here. You see that, Chris? Yeah, okay. Probably your olfactory what? It, well, it looks like a little piece of the bulb, and this looks like a little piece of the tract right there. All right, let's keep going here. Um, now, I'm getting very excited because I'm seeing this structure and this structure, and look at this thing right here, okay? Look at this right here. See, you can see part of this is cut right here in cross-section, and then the structure goes on back like that. Look at that going back. Has anybody got any idea what this structure is I'm putting my finger on right there and my finger on right there? Well, I'm going to keep you guessing for a minute. But remember, you're cutting it here in cross-section. And here you're looking at it as it goes back. 
and it's right here next to the ventricles. It's right here next to the ventricles. So you can start thinking like, what is lying next to the lateral ventricles way out here? And you can, I mean, it's so big, you can see the darn thing. It's gray, it's huge. But let me show you a cross section, a the next cross section. And I'll just even do it this way, like that, so Chris can see it. And then I'm going to make a little slab, not too big. Let me see here, sorry. I want to... I want to I want to tease everybody about what we're going to see here. Now, you can see down below there I'm getting into the temporal lobe down here. So that's going to fall off when I oh, when I cut. Oh, here we go. I'm cutting down through frontal cortex, tip of the temporal lobe, tip of the temporal lobe down here at the bottom and oh, this really turns me on. This is a great section. I know Chris loves this too. Chris is not a neuroscientist, but he has an appreciation for the brain. So I'll leave it right like that. So what was this structure right here? And what is this structure right there? And what is this structure right here? Well, this is a myelinated bundle. You can see it's kind of whitish. Can you see that? And this is a big nucleus, and this is a big nucleus right here, and they look kind of the same. They stain kind of the same. They're the same color. So medial, medial here, here's the anterior limb of the internal capsule. Medial to it would be, does everybody know what would be medial to it? The caudate, and lateral to it would be the putamen. So we're up in the anterior limb, we don't have any lenticular nucleus. We don't have any thalamus, but we have anterior limb. Here's the lateral ventricle. Here's the lenticular nucleus right there. Remember, I told you this morning, the lenticular nucleus is always lateral. Oops, sorry, this is just putamen, but it's part of the lenticular nucleus. So it's lateral to the internal capsule. In this case, we got the anterior limb. And the caudate and the thalamus are going to be medial to the internal capsule. But here we only have caudate. So if we go around to the other side, let's do this. If we go around back to where we were before, la da, what do you think this was right there? Well, it's the most, you can see it's the most rostral part of the striatum, probably the caudate. This would be the, now if we, let's, just, let's just flip. I'll tell you what, why don't I put a hole through here like this? Let me see if this works. Put a hole through there like that, and you can see where it came out on the other side. It was in the caudate, okay? So this is the caudate, and this is the putamen. This is the anterior limb. The other side, the first thing we ever saw was a piece of the caudate. Caudate right there. Here's your big ventricle. Here's your caudate here. Look at that. It's the big head of the caudate, the head of the caudate. We'll go around to this side again. We got the ventricular system here. This little thing here, right here, that uh, if it's not the, this is a little piece called the septum, septum pellucidum. It's not the fornix, it's a little septum that divides the two lateral ventricles. So again, anterior limb, not much interesting in there, but of course, I would be amiss if I didn't tell you what's in there. Let's see, there's some cortical pontines in there, and there's some fibers from the thalamus going up to the cortex in here. But this would be the putamen, this would be the caudate, and together this is called the striatum. What happened was you had the, the striatum, a big nuclear group, basically, divided, you know, all of a sudden it was divided by the anterior limb. But structurally, these are the same thing. They're all filled with those same neurons. Some of them go to direct pathway, some go to indirect. But this is all striatum, caudate, putamen, anterior limb, right there ventricles and that big head of the caudate bulging into the ventricle right there. This, for those of you who are really interested, you do not have to know this. This is something called the anterior commissure. Uh, you might use this later on in your careers, but I certainly would not worry about it right now. Okay, now let's stack this one up like that. That's a very good section. I have to congratulate myself on that. 
<laughs> now I'll do another one. Um, oh, well, let's look at it first before I cut it. Let's look at it before I cut it. Um, what do you, th let's see. Here you go, you got a good looking putamen. You got a good looking caudate. You got a good looking ventricle. You got a good looking anterior limb. You got some pieces of that darn anterior commissure. Down here, you've got the what? Optic nerve, chiasm, tract. Because rostral's out here. Okay? Nerve, chiasm, tract. Lateral ventricles, striatum, putamen, caudate. Look at that. Don't see any globus, not any hint of globus pallidus yet. But look how big the caudate is right on the ventricle. Look how big that putamen is together with the striatum and they're separated by the anterior limb of the internal capsule. What's going to come down in here sometime soon will be the amygdala, and as we go caudal, the hippocampus. So now I'm ready for a section. And close your eyes and dream. Think about what we're getting here. And again, I don't know what we're getting. I'm just cutting. Wow, let's see what we got here. This is a, kind of an interesting section. Um, I don't know how well you're going to see. What are the main take-homes? Ooh, ooh. Well, let's talk about it. This big structure out here certainly is lateral to whatever limb we have. So it's a lenticular nucleus. This structure right in here is the thalamus. So this has got to be, I may, this has got to be the posterior limb. Because this is the thalamus, this is lenticular, and this right here, coming here and going forward, see that down in there? That's your caudate. Now that down in here, rostrally, would be more the head. Now we're starting to get smaller, so it's going to be the body. What else do we have in here that's kind of interesting would be part of the third ventricle right here. So we've got the lateral, lateral, and then, remember I told you this was the septum? See, that looks like a little connective tissue septum. Septum pellucidum, and this fiber bundle right here. Wow. What do you think that is? That's the fornix. And this is kind of an interesting view of it here. Why don't I just do what I want to do here? Well, let's make sure you know everything. Uh, lenticular, posterior limb, thalamus. You don't have, I wouldn't know what thalamic nucleus that is. And uh, thalamus here. Some stuff down here, it's very hard for me to identify. Here's a, here's a little uh, myelinated bundle running up. That could be anything like maybe mammalothalamic. But look at this right here, this right here. What do you think? That, first of all, here is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Remember, that ventricle goes out into the frontal lobe, occipital lobe, goes down and runs into the temporal lobe. This is that ventral medial temporal lobe that Dave talked about and that I emphasized. And there is a little structure down here right there, all coiled up. Look how coiled this thing, darn thing, is right here. This is your hippocampus. This is your hippocampus right here. And here, right here, you can see how that inferior horn of the lateral ventricle dead ends because this, this side is rostral. So it's running forward and it dead ends. Then you have, so a little bit rostral to this. I missed the amygdala. But this would be the hippocampus. And <clears throat> if you look down here, I'm going to open this up because it's very cool. Look at this here. We have the four, two fornices coming together right here. Look at that. All right, and we'll be able to trace those back. Okay, so this is, let's see. Now, this was rostral, so it's actually going forward here. So it's coming up like this, and then it's going to split. Okay, but this is your fornix. This is your septum pellucidum, and... Uh, I'm sure nobody knows what this little dude down in here is. That's part of that anterior commissure. And again, don't worry about it. But let's go over what I think you should know. Inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, hippocampus, fornix, lateral ventricles, septum pellucidum, caudate, caudate. 
internal capsule, posterior limb, lenticular nucleus, lenticular nucleus. Uh, here would be the cingulate gyrus, cingulate. Okay, so that's going to get input from the anterior nucleus of the thalamus, and that's the cingulate. So the blood supply here would be anterior cerebral. All right, your posterior limb. Don't forget your posterior limb gets a dual blood supply from the lateral stripes that are a branch of the middle cerebral and from the an anterior choroidal. Let's look at the other side of this. We might have something interesting on the other side of this. And this is really asymmetrical as I look down at it. Oh, what do we got here? What do we got here? Well, there's our septum pellucidum. Here's our fornix. This certainly is lenticular. This certainly is thalamus. This thir certainly is uh, third ventricle. Here's your posterior limb, nice and white. Here's your lenticular out here. Starting to get a little subdivision in here. This, this could be putamen. Here's your caudate. Remember, it's always going to be hugging that, that ventricle. Here's your lenticular nucleus. Maybe a little piece of globus pallidus here. Nice, nice hippocampus. Beautiful hippocampus. Fornix up here. So you've got to think about there's a piece of fornix coming off the hippocampus. And it's actually connected to this piece too. So look at some of Dave's sections. Let's see, this is caudal. So it's running, it's running uh, from the hippocampus, coming back and going forward to the mammillary body, which, we, which we're behind. I'm pretty sure, let's see. But we'll keep cutting and see. All right, so thalamus. There's another bundle there, darn. Third ventricle, fornix, septum pellucidum, lateral ventricle, big caudate. You can see it right there. I'm running my finger over it. Caudate, probably getting into the body. Lenticular nucleus with a hint of globus pallidus. Over here, lent lenticular nucleus with a hint of globus pallidus. A beautiful hippocampus down here. A beautiful hippocampus down here. Okay, now I'll take another cut. Let's see if we get anything good. Again, I'm pretty asymmetrical here, so maybe I'll try to straighten her out a tad. Well, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we did this. This is our new side. This is our new side. So, again, here's your corpus callosum. Here's your cingulate gyrus, little vessel here, which would be a branch of the anterior cerebral. Here's your lateral ventricles. Here's your third. Here's your fornix septum pellucidum. So here's your lent what's left of the lenticular nucleus out here. So you see I, some of this is in the brainstem that I, oh, this is the best looking hippocampus I've ever seen right there. Look at that little coil. And here's some of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Lenticular nucleus, posterior limb, kind of going down into what's going to look like the cerebral peduncle. So those fibers in the posterior limb go into the cerebral peduncle. Uh, lateral to the posterior limb would be the lenticular nucleus. Medial would be the thalamus and the caudate. Down in here, we, I've just completely cut off any hypothalamus. Uh, anything else you should know? Septum pellucidum, fornix, no. I don't know what that is there. Down in here, you're going to have subthalamic nucleus and things like that, but Maybe I'll try cutting another brain for that. Here's a good hippocampus. Here's its projection to the mammillary bodies, the fornix. Now I'll cut another one. We're getting pretty far caudal here, so pretty soon we're not going to have much. That's interesting. Because I cut the brain stem off. Now we're going to go over the back. Let's see what we got here. Anybody look at this? Okay, kind of a little piece maybe of the hip. Here's some inferior horn. Here's some hippocampus. Uh, oh, very posterior limb here, but look at that. Just a little bit of lenticular. On this side, a whopping thalamus, a relatively small caudate, and hardly anything left of the lenticular nucleus. So... If you were looking for sublenticular, you'd have to look underneath it here, go, you know, and that would be from the medial geniculate body. But, oh, oh, 
here's something right here that I know what it is just by looking at it. Um, doesn't really look a lot like Napoleon's hat, but this would be your lateral geniculate body. Well, it's part of the thalamus, part of the thalamus, okay? So here's your thalamus and caudate, always medial to the internal capsule. Here's your lateral geniculate, which is actually part of the thalamus. Over on the other side, posterior limb, thalamus, look how little the lenticular nucleus is. So as you go from caudal to rostral, you start off with a big thalamus that gets smaller as you go rostral, and you start off with a little lenticular and caudate that get bigger as you go rostral. Okay, so let's see what we got here that's interesting. Back in here, not too much, but basically what we got here, basically what we got here is some hippocampus down in here. Oh, I don't know what, what we got. This is mostly thalamus because your brain stem's down here. Now look carefully here. If you look carefully, you'll see there was a little piece of the lateral geniculate. Where was that? Uh, that's hard to see. But back here, back here, posterior horn are the lateral ventricles back there. Okay. So here we're going to be behind the thalamus and we cut off the brain stem. Okay. Well, why don't I see what I can do on another brain that might, you know, give you a lasting, happy impression of neuroscience. Let's see what I can find. Well, one thing I want to do is I want to cut this down the middle. Oops. First of all, I've got to cut off the brain stem. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll do better this time. Uh, maybe I'll do better this time. Um, I certainly didn't do well on my first one, but, you know, I'm nervous. Uh, let me see. Oh, I goofed this one up, too. Yeah, anyway. Ooh, all right, this looks similar, doesn't it? Um, cerebral peduncle, substantia nigra. Uh, Ruber duber is about as nice as you get it. Cerebral aqueduct and two bumps, one, two, three, four. These right here are rostral. These are the superior colliculi. These are the inferior colliculi. Remember, the pineal can press down on the superior colliculi and cause paranoid syndrome, which is the inability to elevate your eyes. Now, there is a cranial nerve that I might search for here, Chris. Um, it, it's a cranial nerve that comes off behind, oh my gosh, comes dorsally. This is dorsal, this is ventral. The only cranial nerve that comes off, uh, Chris, can you see that? You can just say yes. Yes, Chris says you can see that. So that's got to be, look at that. That makes my day right there. That's cranial nerve four and all, about as good as I've ever seen it. So this is going to go out and eventually, right, penetrate the dura in what fossa? Well, posterior. And then it's going to leave the skull in what fossa? Middle. In what fissure? Superior orbital fissure. In innervate Oops, 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 oops. Where are you? See how easy it is to lose that nerve? It's so thin. Anyway, I know. I'll dig it out here for you. Some vein or artery here. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Oh, that goes to your superior oblique. Now, huh? This way? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Chris wants me to tilt it. You got that? Yeah. Now, I would really be shocked. I'm, I would really be shocked if anybody could identify. I'm seeing something here that really turns me on. So I'm going to make a little, I'm, I'm going to take this off right here. Oops. I'm seeing something here. Everybody knows this is a superior colliculus because this is rostral, this is caudal. This is the other superior colliculus, this is the inferior colliculus, and this is the fourth nerve. Now there's a nice, good bundle running. You can see it right here. Look at that bundle right there. That's starting in the inferior colliculus. You see it, Chris? 
and it's running rostrally, here's the soup, around the superior colliculus. It's starting, look at that right there. It's starting in the inferior colliculus. It runs rostral around the side of the superior colliculus. So it's like an arm. It's the brachium, here's the inferior colliculus, brachium of the inferior colliculus, which is headed for the medial geniculate body. Once you're in the medial geniculate body, out the sublenticular limb you go. But this is really darn good. I've never, let's look on the other side. Oh my gosh, on the other side. Well, let me see, Chris, if I can find a fourth nerve on the other side. Yes. Here's a fourth nerve right there. Right there. And here's the brachium. See, here's, this is kind of midbrainish here. You can see the clips inferior, brachium of the inferior colliculus. The cell bodies of the brachium would be in the inferior colliculus, and the axons would terminate in the thalamus, in the medial geniculate body. So we found some good things here. Fourth nerve, all right. Let's see what else here. Oh, I cut that off. Yeah, okay. So now I was going to cut this down the midline to make sure that you're all clear about a mid-sagittal view. I'll just cut that down the midline like that. And let's see what we can come up with here that might, you know, kind of turn people on. Now again, it's, this is your forehead. This is your occipital lobe. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side. Here's your temporal lobe again. Here's your occipital lobe, your parietal lobe, your frontal lobe. Here's your lateral fissure. Now, what famous artery runs up the lateral fissure right here? Middle cerebral. All right, so now we're going to turn it over and we're going to look at the medial wall. So what would we have here? What would we have on the medial wall that every M1 ought to know? Okay, let's see here. Well, here's the medial wall. This is the cingulate gyrus right here, which is targeted by the anterior nucleus. Here is the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. A big bundle that connects the two hemispheres. Now, this is a structure that you saw in the frontal sections. And I'll give a t-shirt to anybody who knows what structure I'm cutting. Ah, this almost hurts. Into. Right there. This structure, is this the fornix here? Is that the fornix? Or is this the fornix right here? Well, one is a sheet of connective tissue kind, and one of them is a beautiful myelinated bundle. Wow. So here's your fornix. Now, you ought to know where this starts. It starts in the hippocampus, which is down in here. So it goes wrapping around and dives down. So it goes boom, 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 and then it dives down into the mammillary bodies. It just dives down. It comes up and around and boom, right into the mammillary bodies. All right, but this is the fornix. It's looping over the thalamus. It's looping from down here in the temporal lobe over the thalamus and down into the hypothalamus. How do I know that that's the hypothalamus? Well, here's the mammillary body. Here's somewhere in, oh, this is perfect for those of you who have not been very good on the hypothalamus. Here's the mammillary body. Here's the dorsal, this is what I call dorsal thalamus. This is where VPL, VPM, VAVL, anterior, LGB, all those are up in here in the dorsal thalamus. The hypothalamus is lower, and it's defined by having the mammillary body at the caudal part, the tuberal region here in the middle, and the chiasmal region, oh, right there. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so hypothalamus is down here. Oh, and I'm seeing something else here, a little space right there. Look at that right there coming out of the right lateral ventricle, right here, see it? Coming out into this space right here, which is the third. It's this little slit-like space, third, that's gonna run into the cerebral peduncle right here. See, here you can see some nigra and a peduncle. So it's a little weird looking, but just think this slit area in here is the third ventricle, and this is the inter, this thing here is the interventricular foramen of Monroe. 
So there are two of these, interventricular foramens of Monroe, and you can see the fornix kind of looping over here, looping over the thalamus here. Look at that. But remember now, I'll try something really dangerous now, Chris. I'm going to see if I can trace this fornix. Well, first of all, what have I, what have I cut through here, class? I've cut through the septum pellucidum. Okay? So now I can stick my finger into the lateral ventricle and go up in the front. I can go in the back, and remember, back here, some of it even goes down in here. That would be your inferior lobe, inferior horn. So now, I'm going to take a chance on embarrassing myself, but everybody knows I don't mind that. So let's say, here's your fornix coming over the top of the thalamus, and I'm going to see if I can trace it back to the hippocampus. Now, this is hard to do, and you've got to be lucky. All right. So let me trace it here. For, let's see what I got. I might miss. I've been known to miss. But I'm telling you, let's see. Here it is. Let me pick out some stuff here. All right. I'm going to come down into here. Down into here. Hang on. Oh! Oh! All right. Remember I said... This is all smell cortex, and this is the un uncus and the amygdala, but deep to it would be the hippo. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take, take this by the hand, by the horn, and you can see this bundle, right? This is all hippocampus. You can see that white bundle right here? Let me dig that out. See that white bundle right there coming up? Let's see what's going on here. Let me dig in here for a while. All right, here's a white bundle coming up to here. Here it comes. And then here's some piece of fornix up here. So you can kind of see here. Here it starts down here. You can see you can cut down through the hippocampus. Here comes the fornix, dum de dum dum coming around the bend, coming over the back of the thalamus, coming up. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Well, come here. Coming over the top of the thalamus like that, joins the one to the other side, and then it dives. Look at this. It's going to dive. See how it's related to that interventricular foramen? It's going to dive. Watch me dissect this. I'll bet you I can dissect this going right down into that mammillary body there. There's a mammillary body, and I bet I can. There it is. See, I can't find the small structures in the infratemporal fossa, but look at that. That's going right into the mammillary. There's a, there it is. There's your fornix. In the mammillary body, comes back, come around, comes all the way down from down there in that temporal lobe down there. So down in here, I'm putting my finger on the hippo. And then the fornix coming out of it, up. and up. Remember now, this is the thalamus, over. And then it dove down into the mammillary bodies. I hope you got that, everybody. Um, Right here is a good example of a, of a blood vessel. What do you think this is coming up the midline here? This would be a branch of what? Anterior cerebral. Pull that off. Let's see what else we got here. That might turn you on. Uh, let me see. Um, well, we got a good nerve chiasm tract. Oh, I know. I know what you might like to see. You see that, Chris? Okay, Chris and talking. Nerve. Here's the olfactory tract. Nerve, optic nerve. Here's your hypothalamus back here. Chiasmal, super What three nuclei would you have if I went deep here? Superchiasmatic, paraventricular, superoptic. What three nuclei if I went through here? Well, you'd have the ventral medial nucleus of the hypothalamus, where you, if you have a lesion, you eat too much. The lateral hypothalamus, you don't eat enough. And the arcuate nucleus, which has releasing hormones. Then you have your good old mammillary body there. But look what I'm doing here. Look what I'm doing here. Now let's orient yourselves. This is Ross, this is front, back. 
tip of the temporal lobe, ventral medial part of the temporal lobe. Now, what I'm going to do is follow this structure right here. What do you think that is, everybody? Well, nerve, chiasm, hypothalamus. Coming back, this is a cerebral pedunk going no, but look where it's going. It's going back to a structure here. Where does the optic tract end? Does anybody know? Well, the optic tract is going to end right about here in the thalamus. So if I cut through here, I bet I can get a good lateral geniculate body. Let me see now. Watch this. There's the, there's the tract. I'm going to take some of this off. There's the tract going back to that little bump there. Holy mackerel. And that, remember now, this is all thalamus. So I'll bet you, I'll bet you I can take, take that tract right to that bump. And if I cut through that bump um, right here, that's the lateral geniculate body. Now, if it's not, you won't see the section. So let's see. Trust me, everybody. I'm going to cut right at the end of the optic tract. Oh, I might as well get rid of this temporal lobe here. I know that, that some of you are not happy with me, but that's okay. All right, so we're, here's the optic tract going back. Here's a cerebral peduncle. Here's some thalamus here. Now that bump right there, boy, that is a good size bump. And I sure hope, I sure hope it's the lateral geniculate body. And it's going to look like Napoleon's hat. Chris, you, Chris, I got to tell you that this is the best lateral geniculate body. Now, you, now, this, think about Napoleon's hat looking like, look how nice, that is the best looking lateral geniculate body I've ever seen. You see, this would be the back of the hat, this would be the top of the hat, that's the front of the hat. Can you get a close-up on that, Chris? Yeah, good. That is... That is great. Now, what is real? Now, remember what was going there. What was going there was the optic tract, and I saw the bump. The bump was so big that I knew to cut there. But also at the same time, and I remember this is frontally cut. So this is top, bottom. Here's some thalamus out here. There's a good-looking, one of the best lateral geniculates I've ever seen. But also right there is the medial geniculate, and it's same cut that is beautiful. You got your visual relay structure here, right there, getting input from the optic tract and relaying it up via the optic radiations, the area 17. You got the medial geniculate body, getting it information, well, not from the lateral lemniscus. Remember, the lateral lemniscus terminates in the inferior colliculus. So then the inferior colliculus via the brachium goes to the medial geniculate body. But you can see how this is all thalamus, and that's one of the best-looking lateral geniculate bodies I've ever seen in a good-looking medial geniculate body. So, one more thing. Let's see what else we might want to do uh, that I'll leave you with. And that is, I want you to make sure that you know what you're looking at when you look at a, ax a slice, horizontal slice like this, or uh, Lonnie would call it a, an axial, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Oh, my. Uh, pretty good, but let me take another one. I want it to be the classic level that you're going to see Wednesday. Now, you can see where I am. You can see where I am. And so let's see what I get here when I'm done. Oh. Wow, I got more brains here than I've ever had in my whole life. Oh, okay, let's do this one right here. Now, don't forget, this is your forehead. 
This is your occipital. Back here would be your visual cortex, area 17, supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. A lesion here wipes out the whole area 17, will give you a contralateral homonymous hemianopia without a relative afferent pupil defect. This is front, back. Now, so here on this side is very good. Anterior limb of the internal capsule. Why? How do I know that? Well, here's the thalamus. Look how big it is. So these two look alike. This doesn't look like this. So this is the caudate. This is the putamen. This is the globus pallidus. This is the thalamus. As I promised you many, many times in this course, the caudate and the thalamus are always medial to the internal capsule. Now, today we cut the brain like this, okay? And I told you, if we didn't have any thalamus in our section up here, you know, you had just caudate and putamen. Anytime you start having a section going down through here like this, where you have the thalamus, you can see you're going to have the posterior limb. So if you see thalamus in a bundle lateral to it, you know it's the posterior limb. If you don't see thalamus and just see the striatum, you know you're in the anterior limb. Now, what else would I want you to know? Anterior limb, gainu, I want you to know cortical bulbars are in there. I want you to know cortical spinals are in the, in the uh, posterior limb. And it's much easier to damage the cortical spinals with a vascular accident than it is the sensory fibers headed up here from VPL and VPM. So usually you can get a pure motor hemiplegia with a lesion in the posterior limb, and you're not going to have big deficits in sensation. But you will have in the, on the motor side. Here's a, you can see a little piece of globus pallidus here. Um, again, let's see what else. Back, oh, here, coming, oh, here's something very interesting. What do you think this is? Well, this is back in the posterior, coming up, posterior horn or inferior horn. This is some classic choroid plexus right here. Classic choroid plexus. Here's the third ventricle. Um, now, what would this be? Here's the lenticular right here. So what would this be right here? Here's your lateral ventricle, oh, a lot of cord. Uh, right here, coming behind the lenticular nucleus to come back into area 17 would be the optic radiations. Now, as you know, there are two parts of the op, or you could call it retro lenticular, the same thing. Now you knew, know there's two parts to this. There's Myers loop, which is a little more ventral. But it's gonna, Myers loop is gonna go to the to the uh, lower bank of the calcarine fissure, and the lower bank looks at the upper field. Okay, so remember, the optic radiations actually have a couple different parts, Myers loop and the other part, but Myers loop is more ventral and goes to the lower bank of the calcarine, which looks upper. The other, the other radiation will go to the upper bank, which looks lower. Um, let me see what else I want to show you while I'm here. Let's orient ourselves. This is the occipital cortex, frontal cortex, sagittal plane. And uh, let me see, let me find a better one here. Oh, this isn't too bad. Um, I wanted to show you the calcarine fissure. Uh, not on that one. Hang on, hang on. Um, this is the back, yes. Okay. Uh, trust me, this is the occipital cortex. Foreheads up here, occipital back there. Here's your corpus callosum and stuff. But let's open up. Let's see if we can open this fissure up here. Got it really, there it is. So somebody mentioned this morning, I think it was Mott, the calcarine fissure. He, I think it was showing off. The calcarine fissure is right here. This is the medial wall of the hemisphere. This is the lateral wall of the hemisphere. So this would be the right hemisphere, lateral wall, the right hemisphere, medial wall, and the, the calcarine fissure is, an, is a very easy to see fissure on the medial wall. The lower bank here, the lower bank receives from Myers loop and looks at the upper quadrant. The upper bank, the upper bank looks, is, the upper bank 
looks at the lower quadrant. But don't forget, besides upper and lower, you have central, that is something close, more centrally that you use your fovea for, and peripheral vision. And so that's oriented along this axis of each of these lower and upper banks. And the central vision is back here caudal, caudal, in the back, back by our occipital bone. And the peripheral vision is more rostral up here towards the cor corpus callosum. So don't forget, you have the organization of the upper and lower visual fields on the other side, but you also can organize that into peripheral part and central part. I think I'll let you go. Uh, I've enjoyed it. You've been a great class. I uh, love you all, and I'll just say goodbye.